So I had some incredible, you know, experiences and stories with, you know, teaching people the gospel. You know, it's very clear that as a missionary, you only have so much power, but the Lord really makes himself manifest in a lot of ways. One of the areas that I served in is called Newcastle under Lyme, and that's kind of near Stoke-on-Trent in the Potteries area. And when I first arrived there, the missionaries had, you know, just barely started teaching this woman. Her name was Claire. And when Claire first met, met them a week before I'd gotten there, she, you know, she told them, you know, I, I go to this church. I, I go to the Church of England. I'm preparing to be a priest or not, or basically, uh, you know, one of the, the clerics or one of the, um, teachers in this church. And she told them, you know, if you guys like want to come over, like, sure. So they, they went over and she just pulled out this book of all these anti-Mormonism stuff and, you know, argued with them over points of doctrine. And, you know, they got to the point where they're just like, look, like we can't, you know, clearly you're not willing to listen. All we can do is, you know, leave you the book of Mormon and tell you that if you read it and pray about it, you know, you'll, you'll know it's true. And uh, the next day, she invited them to go to her church. So they went to the, the Church of England with her. And um, from what I've heard, it's a unique experience. But then she also, you know, in the afternoon, they, she went to, to our church as well. And she got there and complained about no candles. She complained that it was very boring and dull. They didn't have you know, stained glass windows. The choir didn't sound very good. <laughs> so anything that she could complain about, she kind of did. And the missionaries are just kind of like, okay, well, that's, <laughs> that's all we could do for her, <laughs> you know. Let's spend our time elsewhere. But a couple days later, my, my companion received a phone call from Claire, and she called up and she said, Hi, uh, Elder Peterson, I, I read your book. And he's just like, okay, like you read the pamphlet? She's like, no, no, I, I read the Book of Mormon. She had taken the, the previous three days and read the entire Book of Mormon from cover to cover. And she said, you know, I want you to ask me that same question that you asked me, you know, when you guys taught me on Saturday. And he's like, well, Claire, when you read the Book of Mormon, you know, and know that it's true, will you be baptized? She said, yeah, I'll be baptized. And so, you know, it, just this amazing turnaround story. And so when I, when I got there, that, that was about three days previously that that had occurred. And we, we went over to teach, you know, to teach her these, you know, basic lessons, you know, the first lessons. And we, we get there and she tells us elders, I, you know, my, my husband, you know, really isn't happy with what's happening. You know, Gareth, he's actually, he's an atheist, but for some reason he's, you know, really upset over, you know, this, this happening. He's upset over, you know, me wanting to be baptized despite, you know, I spent the last 11 years, you know, studying and preparing to, you know, become, you know, a teacher and, you know, at my church, you know, not only is he upset, my pastor's upset, <laughs> you know, he's, he's come over and chewed me out and, you know, not only him, but his wife, I've been receiving phone calls, you know, she's just been receiving a lot of opposition, you know, and her, her husband, Gareth actually took off his wedding ring and said, you know, I, I won't be married to a Mormon. And so she was, you know, really upset, but, you know, she's just like, She's also very kind of stubborn and determined, though, and says, you know, but I, I know it's true. And so I'm, I'm still going to be baptized, you know, even if it, you know, despite the consequences of it. And so we were, we were praying for her and praying for her husband. And she called us a few days later. and She says, elders, I have good news. She says, my husband Gareth called me from, from work today and he apologized for, you know, how he's been acting. And he says, if it's really that important to me, then he'd like to, you know, meet with you as well. And, you know, learn what this is all about. And so a couple of days later, we had a lesson with her husband, Gareth. And he, uh, you know, just had this amazing softening of his heart, you know. And we really, really felt the spirit of, of during the lesson. And he accepted an invitation to be baptized two weeks after his wife. You know, by the end of that very, very first lesson, despite him, you know, coming from an atheist background and, you know, not believing. And so we started teaching her husband, Gareth. And two days later... She calls and says, well, Thomas, he wants to be baptized the same day as his dad. Thomas is her, her nine-year-old son. So we're like, great, let's, let's, you know, absolutely. We'd love that for him to be baptized as well. And then not only that, but Claire had invited her mother to come to church that week as well. And so a day after church, Claire calls us and says, elders, I have good news. She says, I, you know, I, my mom enjoyed church. 
I've been telling her everything. I taught her the restoration, the plan of salvation, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I taught her about tithing, about the word of wisdom. You know, I taught her about the law of chastity, and she said she'll live all of it, and I committed her to be baptized the same day as Gareth and Thomas. And we said, great. <laughs> and so about a week or two after that, Claire was baptized. And then, you know, two weeks later, Gareth, her mother Muriel, and her son Thomas were all baptized as well. And then about just over a year later, they were all sealed in the Preston Temple. And so when I had the opportunity back over the summer, it's just wonderful to, to see the, this family that had, you know, been baptized. And then her other daughter, Hope, was baptized a couple weeks ago. And so since she turned eight, and it's just amazing to see that this change that's taken place in this family and, you know, just the miracles that the gospel brought them.